So, first book in the book review series, because let's be fair, witchcraft is very much all about authorism reading. That's where most of the people tend to get their information on if they don't know or train with actual practitioners. Um, so the first one I'm going to review is Cursed Britain. It's a fairly thick book. And I have to say this is going to be a negative review from the outset. Um, like I said, it's a big book and it is Cursed Britain, A History of Witchcraft and Black Magic in Modern Times by Thomas Walters. I don't like it for the simple reason that it doesn't really discuss witchcraft and black magic at all. It talks a lot about cunning folk. Um, it's written by clearly an academic and probably not a practitioner. I'd be very, very, very surprised if uh, the author is a practitioner. There isn't a lot of information in here if you're wanting to learn about what it is witches did. What it really is, and I'll probably just read you a quote from the book to kind of sum up what the author's opinion of witchcraft is. Uh, witchcraft is more like a religious faith than a scientific or common sense theory of how the world works. It is an imaginative, uncanny and wishful way of thinking. This explains why people can go from being sardonic cynics one moment to ardent believers the next. If we want to understand witchcraft, to appreciate why it's so difficult to dislodge, because he does admit that it is difficult to dislodge, no matter what people try to do, um, and often impossible to eradicate altogether, we need to grasp this above all. Witchcraft is a willing belief driven by desperation and not by cool calculation. I understand witchcraft, given that I am a practicing witch, to be systems of magic that are very practical in nature. Witches are practical people. They develop tools and techniques to be used for the simple reason that they do work. Now, the problem with academia is that for a long time, whether you believe that witches, there were initiated lines of witches that pass information on from one generation to the next or not, doesn't really matter. Ultimately, there is no real source material in modern times for the past, past what, thousand or so years. Um, for academics to get their teeth into, witches, if they were working, were very secretive. They wouldn't have written things down. They, this is not like Charmed, where there's a book of shadows and, you know, some academic digs it up somewhere. The main people that you can get records on would have been cunning folk, which are more, really, if you're thinking about it, anti-witches. They're the people that you'd go to to cure the witchcraft, to fix the problem, the, um, break the curse that's been placed on you. So in terms of actual black magic and witchcraft, I don't think that there's a huge um, lot or a huge amount of information out there from the past. There's certainly a lot more now. So when it says Cursed Britain, a history of witchcraft and black magic, there's not a lot of black magic or indeed witchcraft in the book. What there is, is the same as what a lot of these sorts of books have. It's one or two stories of convicted cunning folk um, or wise women or pellers, people in the community that practice some sort of folk magic that became somewhat famous for practicing it and that local villagers or, you know, people from nearby would seek them out for their advice. Often these people would charge. But in terms of you know, some kind of... I mean, how do you fill a book like this but don't really actually say anything? That's the thing. Um, I will just, again, because... Again, why would you even write a book like this if you don't believe or practice magic? I, this boggles my mind. So, uh, witchcraft and its... Uh, witchcraft decline and return, the conclusion... The book's broadest conclusion is that witchcraft, understood as black magic, is an endearing, erratic belief system. It can be therapeutic, but it's also apt to be fraudulent and dangerous. Yeah, okay, that's kind of true. There are a lot of frauds and charlatans out there, and let's be fair, magic can be dangerous. 
Um, if it's not properly controlled, witchcraft will certainly do damage. Mm, controlled, I'm not sure I like that. Social activism and intellectual criticism are unlikely to help. Instead, the best way to control the weird world of black magic is by targeting, uh, by targeted government regulation. So basically, they want to govern, I suppose, who can practice magic, who can call themselves a witch, from what, perhaps, perhaps not, from the gist that I got from reading the book, and I did read the whole thing cover to cover. I know a couple of other people that picked up the book and, and tried to read it, who are practitioners, and ended up putting it down again partly in disgust i wouldn't go that far um but basically in order to keep uh practitioners of magic safe from their clients who might come after them to sue them there needs to be tough regulation and in order to keep the general public safe from the witches out there there needs to be harsh reg regulation on it now if you're a witch and <laughs> you're gonna do some Nasty magic, do you really think that any form of government regulation is going to stop you? Uh, I know a lot of witches and I can 100% say that that's not going to happen. Um, what it perhaps will stop, and it goes into details of, you know, the repeal of the Witchcraft Act and the Fraudulent Mediums Act, that sort of thing, is fraud. Basically, from what I understand, this author basically uh, thinks that all witches or cunning folk or practitioners are either deluding themselves that magic exists or they believe themselves that it doesn't exist and try to con people out of money. There will be charlatans and people whenever money comes into play which will just do or say whatever they can um, to make money. But, I mean witchcraft is a sacred practice it is a religion to some although not all and i would say that i mean i just don't get the purpose of the book there are a lot better books out there which i am going to put a review on if you're interested in cunning folk because essentially this book is not about witches it's about cunning folk um, and their practices, and it doesn't go into a huge amount of detail about specific charms or how they work and why they work, because the author doesn't know. All the author has done, like a lot of authors, is look up court cases and records and who said what. They don't have a foundation in magic. They can't explain to you how candle magic works, for example. They can't explain to you why you would use this specific herb unless they find a reference to it, because they're not practitioners. So with these book reviews, um, I'm going to give each one a rating. So I'm going to give this one a rating of 4 out of 10. 10 being good, 1 being bad. Um, simply because there's, there are a lot better ones out there. I'm going to try and keep all of these um, book reviews under 10 minutes. Um, and I'm not just going to slate books. I am going to put ones in which I do like and, of course, ones that I don't. Because, let's be fair, it's a lot easier to slate something and be nasty about something than it is to praise it. So I am just starting this one off because this seems to be a popular one at the moment. And, I mean, I don't really know why when there are better ones out there. So that's Cursed Britain by Thomas Walters. 4 out of 10, I don't really recommend it personally.